What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome to the Keep It Techie channel. And today I want to embark on an exciting journey into the world of Chasm workspaces. So let's get to it. Now, if you've ever wished for a magic tool to make remote work a breeze, well, you're in luck because Chasm Workspaces is exactly that. So whether you're a Linux ninja or just dipping your toes into the tech pine, this tutorial is gonna be a go-to guide for setting up and mastering Chasm Workspaces on your Ubuntu server. So buckle up and let's dive in. So before we jump into the nitty gritty, let's have a quick chat about what Chasm Workspaces is all about. And I'm currently at chasmweb.com and this is where you can get all the information about Chasm. Now picture this, a virtual desktop wonderland where you can securely access all your apps and data from anywhere with an internet connection. Sounds like a dream, right? Well, that's exactly what Chasm Workspaces offers. It's got everything from session isolation to support different operating systems and apps, all wrapped up in a neat user-friendly package within your browser. Now with Chasm Workspaces, you'll be boosting productivity and collaboration like a pro in no time. Now, before I get to the installation, I want to show you guys where you can get information about Chasm because I stated we will get it installed on Ubuntu 22.04. But if you click up here under support and go to documentation, this gives you all the information on how to install Chasm meaning the operating systems that are available. You can use Ubuntu 20.04 and 22.04, Debian 10, 11, and 12, 10 OS 7, 8, and 9, Oracle Linux, as well as Raspberry Pi. You can run it on Raspberry Pi. And the resource requirements, I just wanted to show you guys this. CPU, you need at least two cores. Memory, you need at least four gigabytes of memory. And storage, you at least need 50 gigabytes of storage, and preferably a SSD. And like I said, they have a very extensive documentation website that you can go through and find anything you need on using Chasm, which covers things like upgrading the system, administration, like your user guide, security, all that information is within this documentation site. And so let's get our hands dirty with the installation process. All right, so I'm logged into my virtual machine that I use for this demonstration just to walk you guys through the installation process. And just to quickly go back to the website right fast, I wanted to show you guys where to get this information if you need it. There are multiple installations. You can do the single server installation, the multi-server installation. I'm gonna click on single server installation. And just so you guys know, there are some system requirements. It'll install Docker as well as Docker Compose throughout this process, just so you guys know. But there is a standard install, the offline install x86-64, and then the offline install ORM64 process. So all you have to do is download those files, move them to those systems, and then run the scripts and they should install. I mean, you're gonna need them, need internet connection in order to install the other dependencies, unless you can install them manually when you have internet connection. But there are dependencies that the script will install, meaning Docker and Docker Compose, I know for sure. And so this is the installation process. Now there are some options down in here. I don't wanna go through them all. But if you purchase a license, then this is how you add the license to the install. You basically go through and run a script and along with your activation key, just so you guys know, once you purchase it, they'll send you an activation key and you can use that to install. And they also have a slim image. So you use this flag and this is the slim Alpine based service container. So just so you guys know, that's how it works. But this is where you can get the installation from. Uh, you, you also have some other options here as well. You can specify certain things like the admin password, user password, all that when you run the script. But I'm gonna just let it randomly generate it. So let's hop back over. We're basically gonna follow these steps and I'll just copy and paste a few things in there so you guys can kind of see it. But let's get to the process of getting it installed. And so let's go to our temp directory. 
on our system, CD into there. And then let's curl down. You wanna make sure you have curl installed. Curl comes installed by default on server. So you shouldn't have a problem with it. If you're using any other distro, you wanna make sure, you know, curl is installed on the system. So let's go down and press enter there. That'll download the current script, most of the up-to-date script. And then we need to extract it. We can use tor-xf and then the actual package name or the actual Tor file name. Press enter, that'll extract it to this current location. If we ls this location, you'll see the chasm release directory that it creates when it extracts it. So this is the Tor file and this is the extracted folder. Now that it's extracted, all we have to do is run the script. So we could type sudo, you need to run it as sudo, bash, and then chasm, you want to go into that directory, that chasm release directory, four slash, and then in here, and I'm gonna just tab it a couple of times so you guys can see everything that's in here. You got all your files that are needed to get it installed. And this main script right here, this SHA script, is what's going to go through all the installation process, installing dependencies and getting everything set up on the system for you. So let's go down and type install.sha and press enter and this will go through the full process we have typing our pseudo password and i'll just let this go and i'll be back when it finishes and this is one thing i forgot to to say there is a license agreement you have to agree to so just type y there press enter and then this will start the full process and you just kind of let it go and come back when it actually finishes all right so the installation is complete as you can see the script does all the heavy lifting for you now let me go through all these passwords and what you want to do is grab all these passwords and store them somewhere uh, i recommend a password manager and that way if you ever need them you have access to them but it basically spits out all the passwords for you so the chasm ui login this is the admin user as well as a random password the user that it creates the default user that it creates with a password random password then there is the database so you may need this information for something in the future but this is the chasm database credentials with a random password as you can see these passwords are pretty long it's no really no need to go in and change them i would recommend you change at least the admin password but the database as long as it can connect you should be good but these are very strong passwords that it uses by default you can go through and change them i'm not saying don't do that but they're pretty strong so and then chasm radis credentials the managed token token credentials as well the got token service registration token and so just grab all this store it in a password manager i recommend you just store it in the notes your password manager under a specific account like the admin account you'll have all these passwords in the notes that way you can go through and find them if you need them if something ever happens to the system but that's pretty much it we can go in on get to the front part which is actually logging into the ui and showing you guys how to use it it's super dope so let's hop over to my browser and we can get right to it all right so back to the documentation as you can see it tells you what the page name is and basically all you have to do is type in the server ip address and it needs to be on port 443 which is the secure port so let's go on and open up another tab i already know what the ip address of the server is it's 192.168.10.235 and i'm gonna press enter and as you can see it kind of went straight to the non-secure port so we need to go in here and and type h colon forward slash forward slash press enter and that'll take us to it now you may see this connection is not private that's because the cert is not installed properly on the server so all we have to do is hit the advance and you can do this on any browser so if you use a chrome firefox whatever you can get past this step by just opening up the advance and then that'll allow you to proceed to this ip address so let's go on and press enter and there we go so we are at chasm workspaces we have successfully installed it on our system and this is why i said we need to make sure we get all our login credentials because first thing you want to do is log in with your admin credentials and so i already copied them out the browser i'm gonna just type that in or paste that in but admin at chasm.local it's basically a local account that it creates and then the random randomly generated password 
we need to go down and paste that in as well so let's tap down paste and log into it and this is essentially your dashboard for the back end of workspaces and this is where you can control a lot of the things on the server so for instance like i said this is a dashboard it goes through and shows you all the information about all the different logins all the users the failed logins sessions created all that good stuff there agent it gives you memory use user usage so what users are actually using so you'll see that start filling up once people start using it and then domain users and if we go into here under access management this is this allows you to set all your so users groups you know basically managing all the users that have access to you got your infrastructure so docker agents servers pools managers zones connection proxies all that good stuff now let's minimize some of it and go to sessions but you got a lot of good information in here so history staging cast let's minimize that and then go to our workspaces your registry and then down here you got your settings so you got your global settings well filtering branding so you can modify this site to look how you want it to developers and then diagnostics so you got your logging system information down there as well all right now one thing i want to show you guys is how to add your workspaces now you can go into under workspaces and go to registry and this will give you all the available workspaces that are out there for you one thing about it like you have to have a good amount of space because some of these kind of big so you need to have enough space for this as you can see i only have 18 gigabytes of space left on this server because it's a small virtual machine doesn't have much on it but the operating system itself but if you look at some of it it, it takes up a good amount of space so like alma linux 8 7.4 gigabytes and you can install that but just you have to be weary of the space that you have stored up here so that's why they put it up here like this so you guys can see and as you can see we don't have any workspaces installed we don't have anything set up yet estimated sizes of all our installed workspaces but it does show you your remaining space so you want to definitely be mindful of that now one of the things i wanted to show you guys if we scroll down in here we can look and what i'm looking for is cali i want to get cali installed so let's install cali all you have to do is click on it and hit install as you can see it kind of removes itself from here because it'll know that it's adding it to the system now as you can see it's about 8.3 gigabytes so that takes up a good amount of space on my server and then you can install other things like other tools that you may want to use like audacity blender uh, you can even install other browsers that'll run in a workspace and so this may take a little time it's downloading it to the system and it'll show up as an available workspace and i'll kind of just wait until that completes because i wanted to show you guys cali and how you could do cybersecurity work from a remote server from anywhere as long as you have internet connection you can connect to this workspace and you can do any and everything you could if you had an installation of cali locally right on this server remotely and of course this is something i didn't say but you can also install chasm within the cloud so if you got a cloud platform or that you use like gcp aws or something like that if you have a ubuntu server or all of those distributions that are supported cnos is supported so you can get it installed on there you can put it within a cloud platform most of these cloud platforms they do have ubuntu you can get installed no problem and you can get chasm installed right there in the cloud and then you can run you know whatever applications you want to run from there or distributions all that good stuff right from the cloud which is super dope now i'll come back when this finishes all right so kali linux is fully installed as you can see it shows the remaining space so it's basically installed and you can also click under these other tabs just to show you guys install workspaces we got kali linux registries and this is basically the repositories where you can grab these workspaces from there's the chasm registry and you can also add custom or third party registries so you do have that option but the main one will pretty much have almost everything you need but it's fully installed so let me log out of the admin because i just mainly wanted to show you guys how to get workspaces installed and then install your different workspaces that you want i'm gonna just install that one because it takes a little time depending on how big it is of course but it takes a little time but i also want to show you guys what it looks like to the users and this will you know kind of break down that admin account versus a user account so when you go in and start creating your users and permissions and all that good stuff you'll see what 
your users will actually see. So let's log out of it right fast. As you can see right here, you can modify your profile, but what we're gonna do is just hit sign out and then we can log out and we're gonna stay here and log in using our user account because once you install a workspace, you know, under admin, it's available to all the users that have valid user accounts. So this is our user account that it created. Let's go on and log into it. So uh, user at chasm.local, let's type in our password, log in. And this is essentially what they're greeted. And you can adjust this under the admin account, like the background, you know, the images and all that stuff. But let's show you guys how it works. So if we click right here on Kali Linux desktop, this will start a session and you can open up your sessions however you want to. You do have an option. So you can do the current tab, you can open up a new tab, which I'm gonna click open new tab that way we can keep this open we can go back to it if we need to but all you had to do is hit launch session and this is what it meant within the admin page where it talked about the sessions it creates multiple sessions you know using this same image for all the different users and as you can see it's super cool it takes a little time because i don't have much hardware pushed to this server i'm gonna build out a better you know chasm server with a little bit more space hard drive space with a lot a lot more hard drive space and i'm gonna install a lot more images just show you guys a little bit more in the future but yeah we created our session and we're good to go and you do have a menu over here you click right there this is the control pan panel so you can give it access to your webcam sound microphone you can make it full screen your clipboard you can give it basically all your access you can log out of workspaces you can delete this session if you need to but let's go down and close that right fast but we have access to a Kali Linux environment and if we go under here you'll see that we have access to all our tools and this is asking about my clipboard if it wants access to it but you have access to all your tools in here so if you want to you know let's say run in map then you can click that and it'll open up the shell and you can run your in map you know what i'm saying you have network connectivity let's open up a browser right fast so you guys can see but you do have internet access as well i'm gonna just run a quick test search on google and boom we got internet access and like i said you can run all your red teaming and cybersecurity tools directly from a chasm workspace so let's exit that out and let me show you guys how to get out of it right fast all you gotta do is go into here and you can leave the session you have that option down here at the bottom so just hit leave this session you can also delete it like i showed you earlier but let's leave that session and it'll show up right here you can actually resume it it'll pop up and you have an option you can also open up a new session if you need to and then you do have those options here as well you could delete this session it shows you you know when it expires the uptime is set to like 60 minutes and i'm sure you can adjust that within the admin side but let's go down and delete it right fast just show you guys how to delete it but it'll go through and delete that session for you all right and so there you have it you're now officially part of the chasm workspaces fan club congrats and if you found this tutorial helpful which i know you did do me a solid and smash that like button drop me a comment with your thoughts and hey why not hit that subscribe button while you're at it and i got plenty more linux goodies coming your way so stick around and let's keep learning together until next time it's your boy josh signing off and of course keep protecting